Hello, hello! How are you doing? I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful afternoon. It is Thursday. Yay, it's Thursday. Oh, I'm going to turn my light on a second. My name is Alex Cooper. If you haven't been in one of my previous classes, oh, look, it's me. I just lit up. Uh, Alex Cooper, if you haven't been in one of my other classes, I teach for the Columbia County Libraries, the computer classes and stuff. Uh, teach for the Columbia County Library in Evans, the Harlem Library, and the Grovetown Library. So welcome, welcome. Today our class is Library Resources and Apps. Okay, So we're going to talk about all the free stuff that you can get through our library and use. The things that our library offers, services, as we like to say, more than just books. Okay, Legal forms, Acorn TV, audiobooks, ebooks. All that kind of great stuff and also online classes too that are free through our library so to start off uh, uh, welcome to class feel free to kind of post any notes into the chat okay uh, do you realize uh, since we switched over to our, our YouTube chat uh, you do actually need to be logged into YouTube to be able to post anything in the chat and also uh, to like or subscribe any of our videos, <laughs> I had to think there. To like or subscribe any of our videos, you have to be logged into YouTube as well. So definitely share with friends or family and stuff. Let's talk about the classes that we did this week, the rest of the month, some information about our library, and then we'll start our class, okay? So Tuesday we did Scratch to Python, Blocks to Coding. And all these videos I'm talking about should still be available up still on our YouTube channel. We covered, uh, if you've done Scratch, the idea was that this is actually a new class that we've done. We did uh, it twice. We did it on Tuesday and we did it on Wednesday at a different time. Uh, I probably recommend the Wednesday one because, you know, teaching a new class the second time you add things to it, you include new things, and you know more than you previously did. Mm. Uh, yesterday we did birding. Yay, birding. We had a special guest. Mr. Bog Eagle joined us for that. Yes, it was a wonderful class. I really enjoyed it. Yes, I did. Uh, wonderful class there. And <laughs> uh, we talked about backyard birding too. Also things that you can feed the birds. Now I encourage you to watch that or at least get started with birding. Bird feeding. Uh, put one outside a window. It's a wonderful thing to do. Of course, it helps feed the birds. It's entertaining for, for everyone, and it's interesting to see what kind of birds that you'll get. Okay. Oh, all right. Let me click the thing here. So this morning, this morning we did the live new class called Video Creating Basics. Uh, we're going to be using the Windows 10 Photos app, and it also has resources. It's a video editor, basically a full-fledged video editor. We'll talk about that. And we'll also talk about making slideshows, video editing, and we'll also be making uh, things like title cards and adding special effects. And they also have little fun stuff that you could even make a movie out of, okay? So that's going to be a great class. That's a new class we're going to be doing on Wednesday. And then on we'll be doing birding on Thursday. So come join me for that. And feel free to ask questions, and I'll give lots of information as well. We're going to be doing the video, the video creating basic class again on the 26th. I'll be live. And in the month, we're going to be doing the gadget help in the morning and the afternoon. So you'll get a, a whole day chance to drop in, ask me any kind of tech uh, problem-solving questions, and see how can I help. Okay. A little side note, our libraries are open with limited services and hours. Of course, we're not teaching any classes online. We're still doing all our classes virtually. Curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for more information. And also call into the library Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and, of course, subscribe to our YouTube video for updates and information. Right now, we're on the YouTube channel. Um, and if you're trying to find our YouTube channel, you can go to GCHRL uh, videos is the easiest way to find us. So let's talk about what we're going to cover today. So let me go ahead and, who I'm back. <laughs> and today we're covering the library resources. Hang on.
So there we are. Yay. Okay, so this class basically began is because we do have a lot of resources at our library that maybe there's some that uh, folks don't know about, uh, some that uh, folks aren't aware of. Um, but the big question I usually get asked is about the free audiobooks and the free ebooks, of course. So we're going to cover that. We're going to go great into detail about that. There are also some courses on Universal Class. Um, and I'll go into some, some different stuff than I did in the class earlier this morning about Universal and stuff. And talk about some other stuff too. So definitely feel free to ask any questions or give any comments in the chat there. There's a little bit of delay, so it may take me just a bit to get there. Okay, and I'm very glad that you're here today. Let me move that. There you go. Look, I have soldiers. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so let's talk about what we're going to cover this afternoon. We're going to talk about what we're going to need. Okay, now if you're listening to this, uh, you know, uh, um, countrywide or <laughs> worldwide, the resources we're only talking about here are for our libraries in the GCHRL um, area. Uh, so uh, I'm not sure or what's available at your local library, but definitely check that out, okay? Uh, so most of our information um, is just for our libraries here, unless those libraries also have these resources as well, okay? So let's, we'll talk about what we need. We'll talk about the Pines app, which is fantastic. Uh, we'll put books, how to put books on hold, renew books um, so that there's no late fees, um, list overdue and our fees that are due and then we'll also be able to pull up our digital card uh, number okay we we'll also talk about law resources like wills digital RB digital app we'll talk about what's available on there and we'll also be talking about ebooks audiobooks um, e magazines e comics <laughs> acorn TV what is acorn TV video lessons uh, to play learn how to play an instrument now is a great time and uh, I'll, I'll tell you this since we're kind of home staying safe and stuff uh, I would look at this as kind of an opportunity to learn something new and when someone says hey what you been up to you can say oh well I've been taking a class on on uh, universal class on something that you know interests you and there you go right there so uh, doing research with Galileo we'll talk about Galileo kids K through 12 uh, homework help, uh, continuing education, universal classes. Uh, we'll talk about what continuing education, continuing education credits you can receive. Uh, we'll talk about Mango, learn a new language, and then we've got a list of little-known um, resources that maybe you didn't know about. Okay, and then I'll list some of our references too. So before we get started, do we have any questions? any questions okay here we go let me go ahead and disappear here up oh, get ready for it oh, I think I stopped it oh let's see it again okay so we flip back and then ah animation there you go uh, PowerPoint animation don't you love it okay so what do we have uh, what do we need okay first we need our Pines library card okay to get one of course you can get it at the library and I will say this if you're having any issues with your library card uh, contact the librarians through Facebook of course call or call into the library um, some folks uh, may not have realized that uh, there's certain aspects of our card uh, that may have expired that you need to renew to be able to access books on the RB digital okay how to do that contact our librarians they're happy to help through Facebook or of course uh, by calling in they'll give you more information specifically uh, to what you need to do okay so the big thing is we need to go to GCHRL which is our home page dot org to gain access to most of the things that we're going to be talking about today. So if I show you our main page here, if we scroll down right now, we're talking about the census a lot. Hopefully you've completed the census. 
Uh, here's information about the curbside holds pickup available at our three uh, branches of library and it has information and also the phone numbers that you can call in at as well. Here's talking about the available current operations of our, our different libraries. Find out information about that. And if we scroll down here, you'll get to see our virtual classes, our virtual events. So my classes are available on here. Of course, story time, teen advisory board, teen advisory projects. Uh, or teen um, uh, makerspace projects are available and basically just click the information to go to those times okay and it'll list more information about those uh, most of us now have gone to our YouTube channel that, that we're on right now so most of these if you click it'll actually send you to uh, the YouTube channel and again if you're on YouTube you can just search for GCHRL videos and it, it'll pull our channel right up okay so here's all our online classes, other online information here, other projects that are going on. Talks about ebooks and audiobooks, which we're going to talk about there today. And of course, here's apply for your library card online. Okay. Information about RB Digital and other resources that we're going to talk about today. Okay. All right. So let's go back up to the top. And now let's look at our menu. Now, our menu allows us access to all our information that we're going to talk about. Okay. And let's go ahead and go back. Turn that off of here. Now, a little bit of a side note, and I like to tell people this. Uh, all our so basically you have your credit card you excuse me you have your <laughs> your library card you have your library card information okay and you want to access all this other stuff uh, the best thing to do is to basically go to our their website find the link you want to go to because some of these services you need to actually set up a username and password with now first you need to set up a username and pass password at the library okay so basically you would go where it says click, basically where it says uh, mine is already logged in. So basically you'd say log in or create account and it'll ask for your library card. There's also the place where apply for a library card as well. Um, one thing that I do know the libraries have, librarians have asked about library cards and, and also the curbside pickup is definitely leave a uh, good contact information in the uh, I believe a phone number I know on the on the um, on the curbside holds pickup. Okay, so definitely leave that so they can contact you if uh, need be. Okay, so we have that. Make sure you're logged in here. So then, when you access any of the other resources that I'm going to talk about, it's actually going to bring a little code to that website to let you know that you're from the library. Okay. If you just went straight to like the universal class or straight to RB Digital, um, it may not have that information. And because you may have to set up a separate name, a separate username and password. Now, I actually recommend you using the same username and password as you do with the library because you won't be pulling your hair out trying to figure out which, which these individual um, programs and stuff, what's the username and password. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and let's talk about our Pines app. Okay, our Pines app, you can actually access this information as well by going to gapines.org. But it up, bum bum. gapines.org, you can access this same information I'm going to talk about. You log into your account, use your library, username, and password. Um, check in, out books, you know, all that kind of stuff. Do a book search, but it's a whole lot easier with the app. It's very quick and it's very, um, you know, keeps you log in, logged in. So you just kind of tap it. Now, I will tell you this. There's one thing, and I actually forgot to mention this in the, the previous class. For myself, when I say log in, it actually will pop up 
and say something to the effect of that. What does it say? It says something to the effect of it pops up and it says, what is your username? But then I actually have to type in my um, my library card number. And the app says username, but when I actually go to the Pines, it says username or your library card number and password, okay? So do you realize that that's one of the things that could happen, um, but if it does, just try either or, okay? I've taught other librarians have any issues with that. No, I've taught other people not have any issues. Apparently that's just me that has had that issue, okay? So what do we have on here? First we have our search, okay? So I searched for Stephen King books, it popped up in the app. Now, one great thing about our search is like an all-encompassing search, okay? So not only does it search for um, the books, okay? So here's a, a normal book, okay? Here's an e-audio book. Now, to access that, you'd actually have to do that through the um, through the RB Digital app, okay? But just realize it can show that it's available here. Now, what else do we have? We have our books. We have book, book, and here at the bottom, do you realize the library not only has you know, movies, TV shows, but they also have CD audiobooks as well. So do realize if you are searching for something that you're trying to say, oh, I want to listen to, um, I want to listen to an audiobook, and it's not even available, um, you know, electronically in some way through the library. Uh, I could check out the CD uh, version of it and then listen to it that way as well. So the app not only will show the ebook, but it also will show the CD audiobook that you can check out and pick up uh, from the library. Now let's talk about, oh well, anyway the next one is items checked out. So a big one with that is, let's say that you're trying to, you're headed back, uh, you're going to drop off your stuff at the library, maybe you have family that has uh, checked out stuff too at the same time, you can, and you're going, did you, uh, have you got everything to take back to the library? And they go, I think so. Well, of course, here you can click very quickly, tap items checked out, tap that, and then it actually will tell you what you have checked out as well. This is also where you go when you think the book um, is coming up, not after it's already late or whatever, but it's coming up and the, the app, if you have it set right, it actually will give you alerts about books that you have checked out saying okay well that you need to take that book back um, within you know a week or so and you're like okay that's great thank you for letting me know I'm gonna check in here this is also where you can uh, check it out again okay not after it's been late but you can actually push your time back uh, certain items I, I'm not a hundred percent sure on every item but certain items I can do two or three times there are certain things that I can't do at all and there's certain items that you can only um, do uh, once, which would be like another week, okay? So this kind of um, can help out with, of course, due dates or something. Let's say you have some books with you. Maybe you have gone for, for doing that service. They, they're, you know, trying their best on that one and trying to make it so our libraries are still functional and, and uh, getting people books and, and items that they need, okay? You can see what the fee was uh, before you even get there, okay? Now, of course, here's the big one. There's show your card, okay? So you can actually show your card uh, right there. Of course, it's a great idea to keep your card, you know, on the, keep the, oh, that's really transparent for some reason. Here, I'll hold it back here, maybe. Uh, make sure to be able to show the, the scan your card, which is on the back of this, you know, that on your keys. That's a really great thing to have. I know that kind of wears out after a while, but it's still a great thing to have. And if you're unable to have that, here you are right here, click show your card, and then boom, you're ready to go, and then they can scan that. And the self-checkout stuff um, allows you to do that as well, okay? Okay, so let's talk about some of our other resources. Any questions about that?
Okay, so let's go ahead and let's talk about one of our resources, which is Law Depot. And getting ready for this class, I asked the, the librarians what a lot of them felt like um, was the, some of the most, uh, you know, used or needed to be used resources that people need to know about. And <laughs> Urchie Creek is now, of course, the Grove Town Library. So there we go right there. Okay, so Law Depot asked a lot of folks, uh, asked a lot of librarians, what do people um, ask about the legal forms? They said people are interested in last will and testament, okay? Living wills, they're looking for bill of sale, and they're also looking for child uh, medical consent forms, okay? So let me pull that up, and we'll go through that. And I'll also show you where that is on the menu. Okay, so if you go to our library's website, gchrl.org, click menu, it's under digital um, re excuse me, it's under education and research and you click legal and then you click Law Depot. This will pop up like this and go on and click Law Depot. And it should. Okay, good. It auto logged me in. Okay, so this is Law Depot. Now if you go to this site directly, it actually would charge a fee. But since it's free through our library, realize that our libraries are paying, you know, uh, for these services to be available to you, your tax money at work. Okay, so please feel free to use these services because uh, um, they are available. Okay, so things like planning my estate, uh, uh, lending someone money, uh, something there's a <laughs> there's a prenuptial. There you go, right there transfer uh, real estate as well and lots of information but let's look at plan my estate and it pops up right here it's very easy I've helped a, a lady work on one that was very detailed the biggest thing is she wanted to do is you see we have a power of will uh, going on medical records release power of attorney And if you click Lit Will and Testament, pops up here and basically it's like a form that you fill out and you can add to it. Uh, the one lady that I was helping wanted was concerned about her pet. So she the really interesting part about it is it went into the pet's name and it also talked about who she wanted to take be in charge of the pet and also what kind of money. Uh, the person could be paid to be taking care of the pet, you know, to take care of the pet. So this is kind of the the idea of the last will and testament is who gets your stuff and, you know, help solve any kind of squabbling or anything like that. Or what did they really want? Well, they always said they wanted such and such. Well, put write it down, put it down in a document, and then it's uh, fully all set up and everything about who gets what and items and it can be very detailed okay now a living will what's a living will well that's what happens if you are incapacitated okay so that's an important document as well so if you're unable to speak or make any kind of medical decisions there you go right there also we talked about the bell cell and also the child medical consent forms as well now you saw that our libraries are opened, um, but you may have to call in, ask questions about uh, notary availability. I will tell you a lot of banks, of course, do notary as well, but technically I'm trying to focus on our uh, the, the ability to use our library. So technically you could uh, go to the library, print up a, a last will and testament, have a notary person um, there at the library notarize. 
uh, the document and then leave with a made will or any of these other consent forms being finished, printed, and notarized, okay? So kind of a one-stop shop uh, situation, okay, for any kind of major uh, legal forms, okay? Now, let's go ahead and let's talk about our name. Any questions about that? Hopefully that's helpful or maybe something that you didn't know that the library actually provided, okay? Now let's talk about Galileo, okay? Who has used Galileo before? Hmm. Maybe you were in school, maybe you were in college, maybe you were doing, you know, something if you used Galileo before. Well, Galileo is still around and it's just gotten bigger and easier to use, okay? So we have Galileo. Galileo uh, has access to over a hundred thousand, oh, excuse me, a hundred databases indexing thousands of periodicals and scholarly journals. Now, this, of course, um, I'd say a lot of these are not available through just doing a Bing or Google search or something um, because uh, this is uh, usually full uh, text articles or other resources. I know Google has their own scholarly, but this is free through the library. Okay, so the big thing is you need to do is you do need a Galileo password. A lot of the times you can just call into the library or contact a librarian, they'll let you know what the password is. Okay, so let me pull that up and I'll walk you through that. So if I go to uh, education and research and then click research, let me walk you through that. So if I you know click there, say education and research, and then I say research, and there's Galileo right there. We'll talk about this one later. This is the one that's uh, to uh, look up stocks and stuff. So basically what you need to do is you need to sign in with the password, okay? The Galileo password, call into the library or contact the librarian and they'll give you the password. One of the big things is that you can actually uh, search for K-12 information, specifically full text articles, ebooks, uh, journals, educational videos and more. There you go, institute right there, and colleges and universities as well. So some of the big stuff about Galileo is not only being able to access 10,000 journals, titles um, are provided in full text, uh, great for resources for school, for a boss, or anything like that, but also having the uh, by grade Galileo section um, that gives you information and it's not really this huge so someone just types in a simple thing like let's research dogs well you may actually pull up some ebooks about uh, dogs kind of geared to all ages or geared specifically to maybe a younger set um, you know just trying to give that as an example a younger set to be able to uh, cover that topic okay so just to realize there is I know the kids are starting to go back to school either virtually or some are doing it on ground as well. Um, but here's uh, homework help kind of stuff and I'll talk about another service that has a uh, live uh, homework help as well. Okay. Any questions about that? Okay, so let's go to our next slide. Let's talk about our pitfalls. And I hate to repeat the same thing, I just want to make sure that I do drive this home. Many library services need you to set up a, a new username and password beyond just what your library ID is, okay? So remember, go to gchrl.org, click on it. Um, if it asks you to set, and then it'll take a, that little code to say that you're from our library and that you're logged into the library to the other services and then if it pops up and says like the universal class it pop up and say hey I see that you're from the you know GCHRL uh, library system uh, that's great we need you to sign up uh, create a username and password 
I recommend using the same one as the library so that you'll remember it. But don't let that um, you know pitfall stop you from using our resources. Okay, it's just the way that our system and their system works because they're a separate system. Okay. Now the holds pickup. I'm not 100% sure how um, that's working right now. Uh, the curbside, of course, is available. I'd recommend contacting the librarians through Facebook or call into the library for questions. Okay. So let's talk about uh, one thing that we do have going on is some of our services like ebooks may be limited to a certain number of checkouts. Okay. Just like if we had a certain amount of regular books, just try again soon. Okay. Try again in the afternoon. Try again at night. Try again the next day. Worst case scenario, probably try again in a week. <laughs> I wouldn't try, you know, on the hour and everything, but realize some of our services, the way that'll work, especially if it's like an ebook or something, it'll say, hey, we'll add you to the wait list. Um, and then you can, uh, you know, when you're, it'll let you know when it's available and you can get it then. Okay. All right, so let's go to our next page. Let's talk about our eBooks, yay. <laughs> so on ground, when we teach this on ground, this is where a lot of people come in and they want help with, okay? So doing this as a live, um, you know, virtual live, the big point about this is to be able to get that word out about our services, but also doing our classes live like this. So if you have any questions, you can come in these during these times or of course come in well you know virtually come in <laughs> during our, uh, our gadget help time with Alex which is me and I'll help out as much as I can usually that's when we do things like help set up accounts and everything like that now like I said there are um, some services and ebooks is one of those where the time can expire and if you do get something that says something the effect of that you're uh, library card has expired with that it has to be uh, renewed just contact the, li the library through Facebook or call into to the library and they'd be happy to fix that um, issue okay so let's talk about our ebooks our audiobooks our e audiobooks I make it e so this makes a little bit more sense too kind of our e comic books our e magazines and our artist works as well okay so let's talk about all these really neat issues um, the really great part about RB Digital is it is a separate app that you can download and I actually do recommend a lot of folks will say hey I've got a, a cell phone that I'm using all this stuff with listen to audio uh, books that's great not really small for looking at the magazines and also really small for looking at the ebooks well you can get a very inexpensive and I know the uh, holidays are coming up so a lot of places like Amazon are going to have sales uh, for those get just a small little tablet a really cheap uh, tablet to get that works well is the Amazon Fire uh, one year I was able to get one of those is it was as cheap as forty dollars it was one of the seven inch screen ones um, for a family member and got to use it a lot and uh, of course you can do Netflix on it and stuff like that as well so it's like a little bit of an added bonus and you can do the Acorn TV on it too so you might want to think about that if you're kind of holding back uh, statistically speaking people don't really want to sit on a laptop and read a book okay just telling you statistically speaking that's what they say that's why we do have the little separate devices so it's a little bit more convenient and maybe we can sit in the area you know and kind of stretch out or something on a sofa or something okay so let's talk about our RB digital so how do we access our RB digital through our website so if you are on our website you click digital library and you may want to, I recommend going through this because I've had it work great with the RB Digital app and then I've had some folks that have some issues with it uh, for some reason. Easiest to go ahead and to be logged into your account. This is where you go to your account, log in. 
or of course you can apply here for the lot new library card um, it's easiest to do this make sure that RB digital is set up properly because it we will have to set up a username and password with them digital library books and then say RB digital books okay And it has automatically logged me in. So I'm logged in and let's look at all the stuff that we can have on here, okay? Can you listen to eBooks and magazines uh, through the web browser? Yes, you can if you want to, but the really big clincher here is to have it as a separate app on a device, take it with you, listen to an audiobook even in the car and stuff, um, you know, and take it with you. So here's our app store, app store supported. Android devices are supported and Amazon Fire are supported as well. They're little tablets. So let's kind of explore kind of stuff we have. So here's like a Stephen King book. And it pops out. It is open for checkout right now. And it says for 14 days. Um, if it wasn't available, I could add it to my wish list and it pop up and let me know when it was available. Um, the longest you can check this book out is 14 days, and that's what it's set to. I'm zoomed in a bit much, so let me zoom out a little bit here. Okay. So if we scroll down, here's our magazines. And if we kind of go back and forth, we can see they have many different topics. Okay. Audubon, photography, do-it-yourself, drawings on here. A uh, big question to get asked about this is, uh, wait, wait, wait. Big question to get asked about this is Consumer Reports on here. No, Consumer Reports is not on here. There's another way that you can access the Consumer Reports stuff, and I'll talk about that later, okay? Guitar player, BB King, all kinds of stuff. And if we click explore, it's more about what magazines aren't on here because there's so many of them, okay? And if you want to explore more, you can click explore here, and you see that there are a lot, okay? It just kind of keeps on going, doesn't it? A lot of magazines, National Geographic Traveler, news stuff, there's photography, PC Magazine, Popular Science, Rolling Stone, let's see, let's see, Scrapbook Creation, Smithsonian, like Fashion Magazines, Fitness Magazine, stuff like that, Yoga, Car and Driver, so it's a lot of stuff, okay? Okay, so let's go back. And I will be I would say most of the magazines are not really a big deal because um, they're, I won't say never, I will say most of them, um, it's not really an issue with being uh, checked out or whatever. All right, now here's our eBooks. So let's click on one. Okay, so this book is available. But let's say, let's see, earlier it was showing a different book. What was it? The John Grisham book. There's James Patterson. Well, it had, there's Alex Cross. There's Michael Crichton one. So when I clicked on this earlier, it's not available. So it's saying hold. You click here and it'll let you know when it's available. Okay. All right, now if we keep scrolling down, we have our comic book section with, uh, so if anybody's like a big Marvel fan, and Spider-Man, it's Spider-Man. Those are all available for download too. And if we scroll down more, believe it or not, the Acorn, T excuse me, the, the RB Digital app is actually connected up with our Acorn TV, our IndieFlix, and our Quello Concerts, okay? So the easiest way to either 
get a subs do our subscription to Acorn TV IndieFlix. Um, really is through the Acorn T the RB Digital app, excuse me. And I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. And if I scroll down here, here's another way that we can connect to Law Depot. The way I showed you earlier is really the easiest way, and we'll do our Argus Works a little bit too. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's talk about our next part. So just a huge resource. Um, this is one of those where I always want to talk more about the ebooks and stuff, but it really is the apps take care of it and makes it very easy once you get in. Uh, the big question I usually get asked is, is there ever a late fee uh, for any of the ebooks or the e audiobooks or e comics or e magazines? No, absolutely not. Once the time is up, it just expires. You won't have access to it anymore. Okay. It's not going to let you have access. And that means that there is no late fee or anything like that. And usually there's a big sigh of relief. Oh, I thought I'd have to remember to log back in on the 14th day or whatever. No, but I will tell you that if, you, if this is something that you like, um, you may want to try to be there at the same time to try to, uh, you know, recheck it out. Um, but there's some eagle eye folks that might have something on hold if it's really popular. Okay. Realize we only have so many books. Um, from the certain and that's mostly your publisher's decision um, but realize that our libraries are paying uh, for you to use these services and sometimes they're being paid they're paying for these services per user use so if you do subscribe if you do sign up you do you know connect up to one of the ebooks you know all we request is that you use it okay and enjoy the service and use the service and have fun okay Okay, so let's talk about our TV stuff. And, and definitely, if you have any other questions about the ebooks or anything like that, you know, let me know. Or, of course, you can call in to the library or ask a librarian, you know, through Facebook or something, too. Uh, so let's talk about our Acorn TV. So we're kind of staying safe at home and stuff. We want to watch something new, okay? Uh, love a lot of our streaming services. Uh, love Netflix, you know, the Amazon Prime, and <laughs> and the free Pluto TV, which next month we'll start, we'll do another cord antenna cord cutting class, okay? So we're actually going to be talking about that. Uh, but this, let's talk about our free stuff from our library. So Acorn TV, British shows, British movies, all kinds of great stuff on there. The Indie Flicks. Indie Flicks, it has independent film on there. It's free as well. And then, of course, there's Quello with their live concerts. Now, uh, the the Quello actually did not ask me about a subscription thing, so, but I'll, I'll just keep going this way. So, basically, and again, this is one of those where I've had uh, folks ask me in class, they go, oh, well, that means I can only use it for seven days. No, that's not the way this works. It's just a subscription, um, you know, checkout, just like you would a book, okay? So if you checked out a book and your time was up, you can come back and then check it out again, can't you? Yes, you can. Well, that's the way this works. So it's not a um, one-time checkout for seven days. It's just after it expires for the seven days, you just got to check it out again, okay? So... The easiest way to do it is to actually use the RB Digital app, uh, just like I showed. And at the end, I'll have a little bit more of a uh, detail uh, to be able to have the information there and to use it that way. And the RB Digital is kind of the easiest way to check out Acorn TV again. And you'll have uh, the apps on your different devices like this, like a Roku or something. And all you do is you use your login. When it expires, go back in the RB Digital, say resubscribe for another seven days. Then you go back to your RB, your, your Roku, and then it's ready to go. Okay? Log you in. Now, do realize these are services that do charge, um, but just check them. Just check the subscription back out from the library, and you won't have to pay anything. Okay? You'll never be charged anything. They just uh, expire. Okay? So let's talk about some of the stuff that we can have on Acorn TV, and I'm actually going to pull it up here in a minute. 
So Acorn TV has lots of popular British shows. Okay, this is kind of uh, another way of. I'm sure you maybe heard about BritBox or anything like that. Well, this one is again specifically streaming service just for British TV stuff. So what kind of stuff is on here? Midsummer Murders, kind of murder mystery shows. Agatha Christie um, got dramas on there. Uh, Agatha Raisin is pretty neat. And here's one that I think it's about a judge. It's wearing a wig. It must be your judge. And of course, there's things like the Murdoch Mysteries. And I'll tell you a little bit about that because I know the little preview I'm going to show you doesn't show that one. That's uh, I've had a family member really get into that show and really likes it. It's uh, early 1900s in Canada. Okay, So it's a British show, but it's in Canada. And it's like they're detectives and they saw murders and mysteries and stuff like that. But the interesting part about it is it has a little bit of a CSI part about it. So they invent stuff to, um, to solve crimes. <laughs> they also have historical figures of the time show up. And there's um, even one episode where Mark Twain shows up and it's played by William Shatner. So imagine William Shatner with the really big uh, Mark Twain mustache. <laughs> He doesn't wear a wig or anything. It's literally William Shatner with the big mustache um, doing an accent, of course. It's quite fun, and some of it is a little bit tongue-in-cheek and, and kind of funny. Okay, okay. so let me show you a little preview of that. So if we go to... So if we go to back to our main website, we click the menu, we click where it says digital library, and we go to where it says audio visual, it'll pop up and say Quello Concerts, Independent Flick, and Acorn TV. So let's click Acorn TV. Now this gives some information um, about it, what kind of streaming services they have, and I have a little bit of a trailer that just kind of shows some of the shows that are on there. Rule number one, get them laughing. Well, that's basically the holy grail of treasure hunting. Well, no, the holy grail is the holy grail of treasure hunting. Well, you're gonna be pedantic. Do you bathe at all? Yes, I do. Well, it's obviously time to step it up. I seem to spend my life searching for patterns. What if there isn't one? She's done nothing wrong. Why don't you just leave? I have come halfway around the world for you. I'm not giving up that easily. interrogating me? Well, of course not. Uh, simply asking the questions that need to be answered in order to find out who killed him and why. I figured you out. Well, you've succeeded where so many ex-wives didn't. Your name is all over this, Jack. No question, you were next. This is not a game, mon ami. Tell me the truth, and now it is your only chance. There you go, right there. So try it out. Let me know how, what you think about in a future class. The, the Jack Irish show. Uh, that looks pretty interesting too. So, if we uh, let's see, where's my hang on? I just wanted a preview of it. Okay, so <laughs> we have our preview right there of all the different class, um, different classes, different shows, and the movies and stuff that they have on there.
Now the other thing that or we're hang on. Let's see. Okay, so I'm at our main I'm gonna talk about the next part here. Let's talk about our indie flicks and I can show a little bit of a preview here. So basically indie flicks, it kind of has international independent film, which if you can kind of course get used to doing uh, subtitles with movies and I know some folks that even with our British shows they'll have the subtitles on uh, mainly just for better understanding you know about what they're saying or if someone's kind of whispering um, as well so with it uh, with the indie flicks there's shows that are international movies but then there's also these other movies too like the Magnif Magnificent Sevens on here he the Night, The Hustler, The Third Man, and classic TV shows too, like The Beverly Hillbillies, Bonanza, Dragnet, and The Robin Hood Show. So when someone says, well, what is in, who is independent flicks for? I kind of say for everybody, and it just has some different shows on there. I think this movie's from South Korea. It's kind of like a cute love story. Clips of stuff, but of course you can try it out free through the library. And to access that, you can actually do that with your RB Digital app, okay? Or you can go through the library as well. So let me show you that. <laughs> so this is uh, Indie Flicks, and it kind of shows the the gist of kind of some of the stuff they have. Some independent cartoons. What is that? That looks really neat. Exploring the Earth. It's like a nice looking documentary. Dial in for Murder is on there. They have series shows. They have social impact shows, short films. See romance, documentaries. They got dramas on there, comedy, horror, and foreign films, of course. And then some thriller classic films. And there's your classic stuff. Let's see. Buster Keaton classic TV shows so someone says what's it for I say I kind of for everybody just kind of tried out some old classic cartoons are on here too musical movies it looks like and artistic stuff and I guess it's like a documentary of films look oh, Planet of the Apes is on there what can I say Planet of the Apes okay so of course you can try that uh, free through our library and the easiest way to resubscribe to that is through our RB digital app okay now I'm going to show you Quello as well so that um, you've seen that so this has a little bit of the information on there like I said it's easiest to log into the RB digital app click main menu select entertainment and then it will show the Acorn TV and it'll show the independent flicks one on there uh, ch uh, click it say check out if you need to create a new password um, hopefully you've already logged in like I said gchrl.org uh, find it that way log in is the easiest thing to do to first time first time users and then you can download the apps to the different devices and then log in with that username and password okay and then when it expires just go back to your whoop when it expires go back to your um, digital uh, RP digital app and basically just recheck it out okay now let me show you so basically you're at our library page and you say digital library, you say audio visual, and then here's independent films, films Acorn TV. This is something new. I'm not that familiar with this. Okay, so this is some classic American broadcast films. 
Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I guess that's a new resource that we have. All right, that's cool. Okay, so let's look at the Quello. Does it have a preview for us? Quello Concerts. Preview. The world's largest collection of full-length concerts and music documentaries. Streaming on demand. The experiences that shaped your life. Iconic artists. New discoveries. Watch Quello concerts at home. Anywhere. Well, there you go. There's Quello talking about all that. And if we go here, and I'm auto logged in, and it has all these different concerts. They had a big thing about, like a big documentary on the original Woodstock. And as you see, it has concerts from Elton John, Deep Purple, Nirvana, the Spice Girls, Mumford and Sons, let's see, Queen. Here's Coachella. The Doors, Who, 1975, Bastille, let's see, A Monsters and Men, Coldplay, you know, Wu-Tang Clan is there, you can pretty much name it, so it just keeps, you know, going and going and going, but it's really, really fun, it's really great, and of course, this is more than just uh, watching just a, a very limited clip on YouTube or something. It is Mac, it is great. So lots of stuff on here. There's even one that's compilation, so I guess it's kind of like their playlists. So there you go right there. We can't go to concerts right now, but with this we could watch concerts. How about that? There will be concerts again in the future. Okay, so whoop. let's talk about our universal class a little bit. So this is universal class. If you haven't seen this before, and again, now's a great time to basically take a course on something. It'll give you new uh, dinner topics to talk about. How about that? Well, what have you been up to? Well, I'm taking a class on uh, universal class well there you go right there so this one is one of the things is there's hundreds of it if you just went directly to universal class um, there is a cost but of course if you go to it through the library there is no cost the library takes care of it uh, hundreds of online uh, continuing education classes so if your job or whatever requires continuing education this is a good way to do that uh, they do offer a certificate which I'm going to talk about that. So let's talk about some of the classes they have to offer, and then I'll open it up and we'll look around a little bit. Okay. So the first one here is kind of a coding class, learning HTML, create pages using HTML5. It's a 10-hour course, and you know this is all you go at your own pace, of course. But the average, I guess they're saying, is the, the time there is the 10 um, hours, okay?
Okay, so our first class there, we actually were talking about HTML coding. Now the next one, I kind of viewed this as, could I take this class and get a job today? Um, yeah, uh, answering the phones or something, you know, a general receptionist. A big thing about that is, uh, let's say you had two candidates um, at a job and they came in, they had the same credentials, they had the same, you know, background, they had the same education, and one of them is actually taking a, a course on the, you know, the subject or whatever it is, like uh, being a receptionist, and they actually have a certification that tells you that they started something, they completed something, and, you know, they finished it. So they're a beginner starter, and then they finished it too. So versus the person that doesn't, um, but the person that has had some kind of training would have a bit of an edge, you know, getting a new job. Okay, so uh, you may think, well, that's not a big deal. It can be a big deal, um, even something just as much as um, saying, yes, I've taken a six-hour course um, on this subject, and I have, I have a certificate in it. Uh, next part here is anyone working... I would say most jobs, <laughs> most jobs at some point, they may ask you if you know how to use Word, uh, PowerPoint, or even Excel. So of course they have the Office Suite um, software um, classes on there. So software classes are on there. And the one on the far right, I kind of view as a, hey, I'm gonna start my own business. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean that you could actually take this course, let's say about making soap, about making or doing something, and then tomorrow you could actually start uh, selling a product, okay? Now, next week we actually have a buying and selling on eBay, buying and selling Facebook Marketplace. Can you safely uh, sell, buy and sell with Facebook Marketplace? Yes, you can uh, now, and of course there's even things called porch pickups and stuff like that. You can set that up as well, but Again, we're at home. We can need to learn something new. We can focus on things that we've um, put off, wanted to learn, and then when we all come out of this, we'll all be more educated and more, um, you know, more ready and more ready to go do stuff and excited. How about that? So something like uh, creating something that you can sell uh, could give you a big edge you know, in the future in general. And it would be a really neat uh, project for the whole family, I believe. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at that. And I'll show you how to get there. So if I do, if I go to the home page, well, I can, I can show that. I go to the home page and I click education and research and I click continuing education. It's going to show this is one of our language apps. We're gonna talk about Mango in a little bit. Uh, this, oh, I did forget about this. So let me point this out real quick. This is the artist work and music lessons. I'll point this out before we start that. Artist Works for Libraries offers you the highest quality instructed music and art lessons available online today. These video libraries are recorded by our award-winning and highly acclaimed teaching artists and presented so that learners of all skill levels and experience can progress. We provide detailed lessons in a wide variety of instruments, genres, and mediums. Our lessons cover the fundamentals for those just starting out, intermediate lessons for those slightly more experienced, and advanced lessons for more seasoned learners. You'll also have access to sample video exchanges in each skill level, Artist Works for Libraries is a great way to learn music or art on your own schedule from the comfort of your home while having access to today's most sought after teachers. And that's Artist Works, okay? That's free through the library. And if I click Start, it'll redirect me. And we can actually see and have full access to all kinds of different classes. There's musical instruments, there's singing, of course, piano lessons, but there's even DJing, okay? Let's check, let's check out the piano lessons. And if we do, well, and we can see that they're all videos, okay? 
and I'm actually not going to have the sound on because this is actually getting into the actual um, program but we'll kind of just have it uh, where's subtitles okay anyway so basically as we can see we have videos that do include actually learning the piano actually learning an instrument of course now is a great time I like that he's showing that you can just basically have like an iPad or like a tablet in front of you um, to do the lessons with the instrument okay great video more than just something that someone you know posted on YouTube it's an actual uh, full-fledged beginning to end you know course okay let's go back we see there's many different types on here there you go so if you want to learn an instrument had a family that wanted to learn an instrument here you go it's a great place to start okay so let's go back to where we were and let's go and let's click where it says universal class and again I'm under education and research continuing education Oh, Mac, that's a great question. Um, there's not really a set time for that. In a little bit, we're going to talk about um, there's a place that you can go uh, for the, um, the fusion. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about our universal class. And I'll sign in. And let's look and see what courses we have okay so a course catalog and we'll kind of jump in one kind of watch one of the introduction videos okay so let's kind of talk about as you see we have lots of different choices here let's look at our computer training one and if we scroll down we can see popular courses are Windows Excel advanced uh, typing and keyboarding and there's our HTML class okay now some of these are specifically to software programs so I would make sure that the uh, the big thing about this is to make sure it's the up to date to the most current version that you're interested in or what's going to be used okay So I think there's one I scrolled down on one of these talks about Dreamweaver and I don't think they even do Dreamweaver anymore. But yeah, so just check that. So these are the current versions. Here's Excel. Here's Google Docs, which I'm going to do a class about that next week. JavaScript, HTML5, Publisher, and there's Word. Okay, Photoshop Elements. There's our PowerPoint 2019. Oh, even they have a Pinterest class. There you go. Typing and using Windows 10. Okay. Let's go back. And let's look at here's one about here's for homes recommended homeschooling classes. Writing basics 101. Reading fundamentals. Enhance your everyday vocabulary. I it's indubitably that we should learn to express our feelings. Uh, more freely <laughs> to combat the idea of a smaller world as my room. <laughs> uh, would that enhance my vocabulary ability? Okay. So lots of history stuff in here. etiquette etiquette for children there's geology 101 short stories nutrition spelling vocabulary all kinds of interesting topics and we also have do-it-yourself as well check that out so we'll be a little different here we'll check these out here Ooh, wellness coach waiter and waitress training there you go 
again, this is one of those things. If someone comes in, they go, you know, they're the same amount of waiter. Maybe neither of them have been a waiter or waitress before. And one person says, well, I've taken a training course on it. Like, okay. Bartending, mixology, cake decorating. Let's see if there's a video on that. Okay, this is not... Some of them have um, introduction videos and some don't. So I really want to show you ones that have the introduction videos. Here's candle making. Does that have a video? No, just her talking about it, I believe. It looks like she, when you actually get in the course, it looks like she um, may have done some videos, but it doesn't look like it's just in the open like that. So let's keep going. Essay writing, event planning, geology. Let's look at the geology one. Okay, so we have a little video. So I'm going to show our little video real quick. Genealogy is one of the fastest growing hobbies in the United States. According to some experts, nearly 75% of Americans are interested in discovering their family history. There are many reasons for this. Some people are interested in learning more about their heritage. Others want to preserve their family's history for future generations, while still others become involved as a means of spending time with older relatives. Whatever the reason, based on the number of books, websites, and software programs devoted to this topic, there is widespread interest that continues to grow. While taking on the task of researching your family tree can appear, and in many cases actually be, a daunting task, it is far from impossible. Thanks to the increasing availability of information online, many people can easily conduct a great deal of their research from the comforts of their own home. In this course, we will present tips and strategies for beginning the process of constructing your family tree. In addition to describing the various records and sources available for finding information, we will help you to understand some basic genealogy terms and tools. We will also discuss the steps that you can take to permanently preserve your family's records and history. So, as you see, we can uh, remember our history. <laughs> um, so basically, it comes into play here. This could actually be a good activity with family to talk about, you know, looking into family history. And if we scroll down here, the really cool thing about these courses are that you can, can actually jump in at any time. You do not have to complete the entire course. You can actually jump into the class. Uh, start the class and then choose uh, to see just one or two of the lessons if you wanted to. Of course, um, if you decide to complete the full thing, that's where you get the certificate from. But if there's some of these topics here that you specifically want to learn, you could jump in here. Again, equaling this to just like a blog article or something that someone has, you know, filmed or whatever on YouTube. Those can be limited because they kind of assume that maybe you know certain amount of stuff and this being a full course, uh, beginning to end, they may assume that you know nothing, and then they cover all the all the topics too. So we talk about it talks about our learning outcomes. What should you be able to do at the end? And of course, this is our big clincher here. With this, is that at the end you can actually have a full uh, certificate to download or be able to print out like a PDF and you can actually have a use a have a digital uh, verified certificate with unique serial number okay and it's something that you can display or promote okay your certificate um, with the resume and it is separate okay something that you can share 
something that you can put on a resume that you've begun and completed something and they even talk about sharing it on social media too now is a good time to do that to encourage others to um, you know focus on learning something new so let's learn something new get some resources talking about how much they like it now uh, oh this is great because I did actually want to go to that one crafts and hobbies Candle making, there's our soap. Soap making, bread, cake decorating. There's our cooking, our previous class we looked at, our cooking class some. Let's look at one more class and then we'll move on to our, our next section, okay? Let's see. Oh, this is an interesting one about the canning. I won't play all of this, but I'll just play some. Introduction to canning and preserving. The garden suggests there might be a place where we can meet nature halfway. That's a quote by Michael Pollan. And if you are like most Americans, you've never even come close to canning or preserving. In recent decades, it has become a bit rare for people to take part in this age-old process. Tell someone that you are going to spend the weekend canning some fruits and vegetables, and you will probably get a few raised eyebrows. But if you could peer into a looking glass at the things your ancestors did just decades ago, you would see that canning and preserving played a big role in the food system. With modern technology, people canning and preserving their own food largely fell by the wayside. Once used as a means to preserve food that you could later enjoy throughout the year, modern transportation has made it possible to walk into a grocery store just about anywhere in the country and get just about any type of produce in the middle of January. This was simply unheard of decades ago. How we got here At one time, and not so long ago, People ate according to what was in season and readily available at the market, from their garden, or from a local source. When transportation systems began making it simple to transport produce around the world during any given month, people no longer felt they needed to preserve their summer stock. Instead, they would simply go to the grocery store and buy their blueberries flown in from Chile in December, for example. While we as a country have been busy flying in and purchasing food from around the world, we have lost sight of something that is part of our tradition. Most of us have left canning and preserving behind, not knowing the least thing about how to go about doing it or why we even should care to. But as with most things, what is old is new again and canning and preserving is now increasing in popularity. Benefits of Canning and Preserving in the last couple of years, there's been a vast increase in the number of people who have become interested in having their own gardens, as well as canning and preserving, which often go hand in hand. Some of the various reasons why so many people have taken an interest in returning to their canning and preserving heritage include environmental. Many people have learned about the environmental damage caused by flying out of season produce from around the world. Flying berries, for example, thousands of miles, creates a big environmental footprint because of all the few... Okay, so let's go. It's really great information. Um, so as you can see, it must be a very detailed course. And these are kind of some of those resources that you can just go to the local store and get like a canning kit, get a soap making kit, you know, or even the essential oils kind of kit. So you could actually start your own business, okay? some ideas <laughs> so let's go ahead and let's talk about our next part let's talk about our other programs uh, mango is a wonderful program uh, learn a new language and I know with mango you do have to set up a new username and password with them of course you just go through our library gchrl.org uh, to be able to set that up and even if you're learning English as a second language, 
this could be a great program to do that as well okay now Mac I think this was the information that you might have been interested in um, this is actually the 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 brain fuse and I will show that on the main page if I can find it let's see um I thought it was under the educational one but it's not give me a sec oh it is the okay so if if I go to education and research I won't actually log in because I of course don't have any questions but to actually access this, you go education and research and you go to where it says tutoring. Okay. So tutoring is called brain fuse help. Now there's a bunch of different brain fuse. Now there's even brain fuse vet help as well. But they help do the live tutoring. And Mac, there's a link to that directly. Hope that helps. Just put your library card in here. And basically, what does it talk about? It talks about homework help, skill building, okay, personal e learning tools, file sharing, uh, 24 hours writing lab area, okay. This is actually one of our newer uh, resources. And oh, it even has a, a foreign language lab help situation they do have a phone number that you can call into if you have any problems with uh, using the service at all okay but live tutoring is available every day from 2 a.m. to 11 it says so that's a great resource uh, to have available okay Brain Fuse Help Now. Remember, on our main page, hit Menu, Education, Tutoring, and it's right there Brain Fuse Help Now. So it has live tutoring, writing lab. Uh, the big one is it actually has uh, flashcards that you can set up yourself as well. They also have ways to do virtual meetings. Uh, do realize that I know that talking about this a year ago, a lot of folks were like, we just meet in person. Do realize that none of our study um, areas are open to the library. And of course, I'm not teaching any classes there. Um, we're all doing everything virtual. So now we have to learn how to do stuff virtual. So they have some virtual study sessions or private uh, study rooms available uh, to do that if you don't want to use some of the other apps that are available okay it's a great resource uh, to be able to use okay so let's go ahead and let's talk about some of our less known services that we have here at the library things that uh, basically researching for this class may not realize that are available so let me show you this oh one of them is uh, accessing the Augusta Chronicle uh, as of right now 
Uh, the last time I looked is from 1994 to current. Text only, no pictures. Um, access available uh, with images of, of the paper from 2017 to current. Do you realize that most of our libraries do have a bit of a resource of back newspapers? Uh, the largest one, the one that goes furthest back, should be the Augusta Library downtown. Okay. And to access, uh, of course, the consumer reports, I'll talk about that in a second. To access that, we click menu, digital library, newspaper, and periodical. This is where the consumer reports is, but you will need the uh, Galileo password to access that. As I said earlier, you can call into the library or contact the library and they'll give you uh, the changing password. It changes uh, for that. And uh, there's the Augusta Chronicles right there. This Chronicle, sorry. This takes you here. It allows you to search. And also you can create an alert as well. Okay, so you can search uh, articles from the Augusta Chronicle. Now let me see. Oh, I've tried to do like a simple search here before. And mostly it's broken up into, okay, come on. The different sections. Okay. And is access to other uh, sections as well. Okay. New search. Because Chronicle. Let's see, let's do advanced here. Oh, you can do a date range, date, source. Headlines, there you go. And here you can access, and it shows all the other periodicals that they can access as well. Let's see, is there something for Savannah? There it is, Savannah Examiner. Cool, and it shows which ones they have available. Okay, so what about, about June 20th? Eh. Oh, 2016, okay. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Look back at St. Patty's Day. There you go. There's your article. 2016, looking back at St. Patty's Day. River Street gets more and more crowded. I, I'm sure, because that's where they do the parade. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about our other stuff. Of course, we pointed out this. Uh, the Merchant Intelligent. Uh, is a great resource if you're looking up private businesses you can access that through our uh, website heritage quest is available if you're looking up the genealogy as well and if we go search gale and i'll pull that up i do digital library Oh, hang on, where is it? Yeah, Digital Library Reference Books. All right, Digital Library, Reference, Reference Ebooks. I'll show that real quick. So, where is it? Digital Library, Reference, Reference Ebooks, and here we are at Gale, okay? So Gale includes a ton of different resources, and these are just ebooks that you can just click 
and it has medical books, environmental books, let's see, law, history, technology stuff, science, bio, um, biography, and so forth. But I want to show you the travel books because it has a bunch of the DK travel books on here. Now, these may not be the newest version of these books. You'll just have to check and see. But really do like the DK books. Here's Beijing and Shanghai. Let's look at that. We have our table of contents right here. As you see, it shows um, pictures. Good thing about the DK books, and I really like those. It shows the maps of the cities that you go to. Oh, it's showing the uh, full listing of everything getting around. Pictures. And if you want to view the travel books, where did I do the, uh, let's see. You can print, but it'll only let you print so much, which is kind of funny. I think it's like only 10 pages or something. So how to use this book. And if you want to see the pages, you can click them and zoom in as well. So it's the book a little bit in the form. And there's citations. And a lot of times that you can view, I may have done this differently. So yeah, okay, it's indexing, that's illustrations. It's not really what I'm looking for. Aha, duh, up here, I'm sorry. So this is one way of viewing the book and then you can say view ebook here. And then it pulls it in and if you zoom out, There you are, and just kind of flip through the book. But the DK books are excellent for travel. I definitely recommend them. They even have these little short things talking about, well, if you are only have two days in a city, try to start here and go here. Um, they kind of plan stuff out. And of course, it has maps. talks about culture, things to buy, things to be aware of. And things not to do and stuff like that. So these are a great resource. Now the other thing is now currently, of course, our things are not putting out um, listings of events but in the future there'll be future events and of course you can check the current magazine and page turner and things like that for the future okay all right so we're coming to the end of our class today i hope you um, learned something new i'm going to cover some of our other classes we have and that will finish us up for this week now do you realize here's some other resources here and I'll come back here. Hey, it's me. So we have some other resources listed here. If you do come to the library, um, usually we have some kind of handouts to be able to pass out here that gives a little bit more detail about the certain uh, things and also if anything new comes out as well. Do you realize, remember, you can go directly to these websites, but a lot of them, what you need to do first is to go through our website to get there and then you'll have access uh, to everything. And if anything pops up and says something about cost, do realize that all these are free uh, through using our library system. Okay. All right. So we have covered a lot today, haven't we? Yes, we have. Let's talk about some of our upcoming classes. And I'll disappear again. So our upcoming classes. So next week, We've got our Google School class coming up. We're going to cover a lot about Google, a lot of the free things on Google. So we cover searching, 
doing better searches, photos, backing up photos. We cover 3D stuff, all kinds of great pro um, things that uh, Google does. Google gives out for free. Um, we'll talk about the Google uh, Suites uh, 101, using Google Docs, using Google, um, anyway, their, their version of Word, their version of PowerPoint, and their version of Excel, okay? That's what Google Suites is. That's just one class, and it just kind of covers all three of the different parts. It's just kind of a beginner. Um, currently, we're not having a huge uh, request on getting specifically about each one. Um, of course, we do separate Word classes and PowerPoint and stuff as well. And then we'll finish up that week by eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and buying and selling. And on Wednesday, we're going to be doing a new class, Video Creating Basics. So come join me for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. Okay. And also on Thursday, we're going to be doing birding. Um, and of course, I'll post not only will all our videos be here on our YouTube page, uh, but we'll, I'll also post the link in the, the, the separate library um, Facebook pages as well as kind of an alert. So make sure that you're kind of following all three of our libraries so you'll get that information and also subscribe uh, to our YouTube page so you'll get everything, all that good information. And then next week we're going to be doing our kind of our boot camp. Uh, classes here, Windows 10 flash drive basics using Windows 10, internet and browser basics, including add-ons, um, um, block, uh, spam blockers, stuff like that, Google search and internet safety basics, and that class does include uh, spotting fake news. So that's one of our new things we got requested about, adding a fake news section, doing research about that to make sure that all our sources are coming from the right place and not um, just a blog site or something somebody put out something as a joke okay so we definitely have to check our news because it could technically be a joke site putting out something and we believe it okay and then we'll be doing our class again a video creating basics and gadget help okay internet safety and security is a great class and we also cover what a, a VPN is on that one okay on the end of the month, we're going to be doing birding, yay, uh, class next week. And then we're going to be doing Introduction to Raspberry Pi and Computer Projects. And I'm going to have two new projects that we're going to be kind of doing a hands-on with. And the last day, the 27th, we're actually going to be doing a uh, double a gadget help in the morning and a gadget help in the afternoon as well. So I'll be live for both of those. So if you have tech questions, or anything like that okay come on by and if you are having problems maybe you were trying to get the acorn TV to work and you couldn't and you want some tips from me I'm happy to help now that is actually like a drop-in class and I'll be kind of covering some of the resources or I'll be talking about different topics now last time I did a gadget help with Alex that's me uh, had some people ask questions about memory cards from a Samsung phone and then someone did ask about what would you recommend as uh, continuing classes so that's why I really wanted to add the library resources uh, classes this month so that we could talk about the continuing education using our universal class and some of the other stuff too just a little bit of extra note here our libraries are open with limited services and hours okay curbside holds pickup is available you can check uh, uh, you can check gchrl.org for more details or you can call the library with questions Monday through Friday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. don't forget to like us on Facebook so you'll be up to date about um, everything that we're up to and uh, you know we've got lots of stuff going on okay for all age groups don't forget to like and subscribe our videos like and subscribe and like my videos too on YouTube right now we're on YouTube but in the future if you're trying to find our YouTube channel it's GCHRL videos just search for that and it's the easiest way to find our channel okay so unless there's any other uh, further questions I'll tell everybody thank you for coming and have a, today's Thursday, have a great Friday, and have a great weekend, okay?
Thank you for coming, and I will see you guys next week, okay? Lots of fun stuff, even a new uh, video editing class. So we're going to think positive. Stay safe. Remember to go outside and get some of that uh, vitamin E from the sun and lots of exercise and stuff. And uh, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you.